the challenge of the Yukon. The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Edward Carson had been married to Stella Burns a year. It was a year that proved the skeptics wrong who'd called it an impossible match, saying Eddie would never settle down. It had been a year of thinking of someone else's happiness before his own. It had meant sacrifices, taking a job in her father's bank because Stella wanted him to. Young Carson thought of these things as he stood before his father-in-law's desk in a prominent city bank in the United States in 1875. Eddie, you know what it would mean to Stella's mother if I were to be exposed in a scandal. The shock would kill her. And you know what Stella thinks of her mother. Yeah, I, I know. But you should have thought that before. I should have, I guess. But the damage is done. The bank examiners will be here in a week. You've got to help me, Eddie. You can go away. Stella would understand. I'd tell her why you left. All my life I've been a prominent citizen. She'd, she'd never be able to hold her head up if the story should get out. Well, it'd be just as bad for her if her husband were branded a thief. Not if she knew the truth. A week later, when the story broke and Edward Carson was branded a thief, Frank Burns appeared to be stunned. In his large home, he spoke soothingly to his daughter, Stella. There now, Stella. It's no use crying. He was doing so well. But he always had a wild streak in him. I told you that when you married him. It's uh, best to just forget about him. You make your home with Mother and me and uh, forget about Eddie Carson. It was months later. And in the dingy saloon on the waterfront, Eddie Carson, now known as John Smith, sat reading a newspaper. Hey, Come over here and see what Smith's reading. <laughs> he, he's reading the society page of the newspaper. It says here, it says, Mrs. Stella Carson died last night in St. Mary's Hospital. Her baby daughter... Shut up, you drunken sailor. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Smitty? Shame to be in court reading the society page, huh? Oh, I read it all the time when I drink me spot of tea. Shut up. <laughs> Why, you... <laughs> Maybe that'll teach you to mind your own business. Twenty years passed, and in Frank Burns' house, the old man sent for his granddaughter. It's about, about your father. You know the story of what happened. Yes, I know. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth about it. Stella, he never took that money. What? I took it. I'd made a lot of bad investments. Yes, but, but they told me he left a note He that he... took the blame to cover up for me. Did my mother know that? Did you tell her before... before she died? No. No, I didn't tell her. You mean she... She died believing my father was a thief when, when all the time he'd been shielding you. Well, I... I meant to tell her, but... Uh, but you didn't. Stella, if ever a man paid for what he did, I have. Paid? Well, you've had security and comfort all this time, but... What about my father? Security? <laughs> I... I haven't had a penny I could call my own these, these last 20 years. 
Well, what have we been living on, I We've been living on the money your father sent. Where did he send it from? All over. He sent money from the Argentine, Singapore, Madagascar, the East Indies, Amsterdam. But where was he when you last heard from him? How long ago was it? About two months ago. Well, where was he then? (laughs) Grandfather, please, where was he then? Open the first drawer in the chest over there. That's where I put the envelope. You see it? Where is it postmarked? Postmark. Dorothy. Yukon Territory. Several months had passed. Stella Carson's determination to find her father had led her to the Yukon. In Dawson, she found no trace of Edward Carson and had moved on further inland to Clover City, where she talked to Sergeant Preston. Eddie Carson, who still was known simply as John Smith, owned the Black Ace Saloon. And he sat in the back room with a bottle of whiskey at his elbow as the Mountie talked to him. Twenty years had made many changes in the appearance of the man who'd lived in different climates in countries all over the globe. Slowly, he reached for the whiskey to refill his glass. Uh, drink, Sergeant? Oh, no, thanks, John. What about all this? I've been watching you ever since that girl came to town. I've never seen you show an interest in any individual before, man or woman. This cousin is young. About 20, I imagine. Young enough, John, to be your daughter. All right. You seem to have put everything together. Maybe you've guessed the truth. I knew the truth, John, when you signed the mine over to her. You aren't usually so... So generous? (laughs) Did you tell her? Of course not. Your secret is your own. So far as she knows, you were just making a gesture to a young girl who's apparently alone in the world. She probably chalked it up to a drunken whim of yours. I don't think she even knows the value of the mine. Well, it's rich enough to take care of her all her life. But the most important thing to her is to find her father. That's no use, Sergeant. You don't understand. You said she probably thought my turning the mine over to her was a... a drunken gesture. You're right. If she thinks of me at all... she thinks of me as a... broken-down old fool. No. No, John, that isn't true. Sure it's true. Don't you think I've known it? She feels sorry for me. Twenty years is a long time. I've done too many things. I've... That's no use. You can't go back. Well, I wish you'd think it over. I have thought it over. I've been a lucky man, Sergeant. I've lived long enough to see my daughter more than I've ever hoped for. The word that Stella Carson now owned the Moonbeam Mine got around quickly in Clover City. In the front of the saloon, two men sat at a table. Al Lawson's forehead was creased with a deep frown. Listen, Sam, I don't know what this is all about. I don't have time to tell you. We've had our eyes on the moonbeam for a long time. Yeah, sure, but it don't... No buts, Sam. Uh, my plan works out. We'll have it. Shut up. Here she comes. Mr. Ellison? Oh, yes. I, uh, this is Mr. Lawson, ma'am. Here, let me help you. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I understand you come up here to the Yukon to look for your father, Edward Carson. Yes, that's true. Well, I think me and Al can help you out. You can? You see, we met a man named Carson about two months ago in Barlow Rapids. Now, it's kind of a hard sort of place to get to, but uh, Al and me could get you up there. Oh, I can hardly believe yeah, it. Yeah, I guess it is good news. <laughs> You've been looking for him for quite a while. How soon can we start? Just as soon as you're ready. I can be ready in 20 minutes. Fine. Now, you meet Al and me at the north end of town. Ought to be dark by then, but we know the trail. All right, I'll I'll see you then. Later, Stella Carson came down the stairs of the Black Ace. 
Hello there, Mr. Smith. Well, you're looking very happy about something, Miss Carson. Oh, I am happy. I, I've just been talking to two men who who are going to take me to my father. What? They said they saw him at, um, at a place called Barlow Rapids. I'm going to meet them now at the north end of town. Oh, I, I see. Uh, they must have been the fellows who stopped in here a few minutes ago. They did? Yes. They said you should meet them at the Molly's cabin instead. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I see. Well, wish me luck, Mr. Smith. I do, Stella. I wish you luck always. With all my heart. At Sergeant Preston's cabin, the Mountie was amazed that Stella Carson told him her reason for being there. King, standing close to his master, listened to the conversation. And you say Smith told you to come here? Instead of meeting the two men as you'd arranged. Yes, he said they told him to give me that message. Hmm, I see. Well, well, where are you going, Sergeant? To the north end of town. Come on, King. Wait. Well, wait for me. Darkness had settled over Clover City. And at the north end of town, two men dragged a limp figure toward the river's edge. How do you suppose he knew what we were up to? I don't know. <laughs> made a mistake when he told us to clear out of town. Well, he's unconscious now. Never knew what hit him when you stopped with a buddy you got. <clears throat> Come on. That group of trees will keep anybody from seeing us. But I want to get him under the ice. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston, Stella Carson, and the great dog King had approached the point the two men had designated as a meeting place. Darkness made it impossible to see the trail. King caught the scent. And slowly, with a suppressed excitement, he padded about in the snow to find in which direction the trail led. What is it, boy? Yes, I know you're here, fella. But King hadn't caught the Mountie's hand in his teeth simply to make his presence known. Persistently, he pulled his arm. What's he making all that noise for, Sergeant? I, I don't know. He... Hey there, King. He's put his weight against my leg. He seems to be pushing me. That's it. He wants us to head toward the river. As the two men reached the river's edge, Al Lawson held a match to a lantern he carried. The flame burned low, but threw enough light for them to test the ice. Put the lantern down on the bank, Al. I want to get this over with and be out of here before any... What's this? A door! Ah, don't pay any attention to him. You head back to town. Well, that Carson girl's going to be wondering why we ain't up on the trail. He knows why you're not on the trail. Put up your hands, both of you. Sam, it's a mountain. Sergeant, it's Mr. Smith. What? Well, Are these the two a... men you were supposed to meet, Miss Carson? Why, yes, but I don't understand all this. All the pieces fit together. These men probably knew you owned the Moonbeam Mine. They were planning to force you to sign it over to them. It was all his idea. He said we could get her to sign it over and then do away with well, it. Why, you dirty double cross how? Why did they beat Mr. Smith? I don't you understand. You told me you mentioned to him about your intended trip. Yes. He knew your father couldn't possibly be in Barlow Rabbits. You see, he's your father. What? Right. Uh, He's coming around now. You two are under arrest for attempted murder and conspiracy to defraud. Sergeant. Sergeant, is she all right? Yes, I... I'm all right. Father. Oh, Stella. <laughs> it's all right, Dad. It's all right. Yes, King, old boy. Everything is all right. Thanks to you... The case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They're sent to you each week at the same time.